All right, so let's try that again. A little bit of uh, confusion going on. You can see another laptop right here. I think the IT guy got confused as to which one he was supposed to work on today. Way to go, Joe. <laughs> Can't say anything about our IT department. I'm trying to keep us all connected is not an easy task. So thank you, Joe, for uh, getting that one taken care of for me. So here we are back um, from my trip. Where did I go last? Birmingham. Up there playing on the racetrack. And I should have brought a jet ski instead because, as y'all were aware, it really got nasty in the south. So that's what we were driving in most of the day. <laughs> Totally worth it though. Nothing like slip sliding in the rain or in the in the in the wet. A good dose of uh, car control was handed out to everybody, especially my student. He did quite well, but what do you expect? He is a uh, Air Force pilot. Thank you, sir, for your service, Spencer. If you're out there, hello, Panagiotis. Hope you're doing well. All right, first order of business. Let me get over to. Any questions I missed? Plus, there's a reminder that they put at the very top of the uh, Word document. <clears throat> we are holding a new giveaway every week of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Series. This week, we're giving away a Risk Racing Ride-On Lift Stand. So go to www.partzilla.com forward slash LP forward slash PRMX. You okay, John? I think so. <laughs> I think so. What have you heard? I am with our uh, multimedia team. So I'm going to copy this link and see if I can drop it into the chat. All right. So go here and go into yeah, I know. I'm back on. Get up to speed, Tracy. Come on. We've already, we're already retransmitting. <laughs> yeah, 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 guys. I know. My team's telling me that the first one didn't work. Well, you and I know that, don't we? They haven't switched over to the new stream yet. Um, last week, what did we give away? It was an Alpine Stars M10, M10 helmet. I have an M8 for myself because I couldn't afford the 10, but the Olga, I can't remember her last name, ended up winning that one from last week, and I think I mailed it out on uh, Tuesday. So yeah, they're figuring it out now. That's why you hear all this chirping going on in the background. So Every week, we're going to be giving away something really nice. So you need to go check it out, uh, that PRMX uh, giveaway that we're doing. And plus, go check out those, those riders. They are a truly talented, talented group of guys representing us out on the monster, monster circuit, Supercross circuit, that is. So, oh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll start off with, Anything I missed last week, and then I'll let some questions uh, build up, and then off we go. Uh, Matthew Jennings had asked me last time, and I couldn't get to it. Can you tell me why my TRX 350 is really difficult to change gears now, and how do I check or change the gearbox oil? Well, there is no difference in between your gearbox oil and the rest of the engine oil, as well, well as your clutch. I'd be curious, have you lost a bunch of oil, or were you working it really hard? I've run into that before, and believe it or not, you know, I was just, or I got a machine that just had a regular uh, oil in it. I went to a semi synthetic, and that the HP oil that comes in the gold bottle does an amazing job, and I uh, might be able to revitalize uh, your 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 gear change uh, smoothness. So I would say, let's go ahead and change the oil quickly. And if it if it looks that bad, if it's really that broken down in there, because it's doing a lot of work. You may want to change it once with just the conventional oil and then go back with the semi-synthetic after that just to flush it out really well. Richard Grubb had sent a question. I have a Honda 2500 Sportsman, Foreman actually, uh, just put on new front calipers and brakes. Brakes work, 
brakes worked good for about two hours and then the brakes locked up and the brake handle would, could not be moved. What's well, the problem? Well, it sounds like you addressed the issues that were going on at, down at the calipers, but I don't recall, or I don't see you uh, addressing the, uh, the master cylinder up top. So my guess at this point is the system was dry for a long time. You went and replaced the, uh, the calipers. You did not uh, do anything to the, uh, the master up top and it's probably frozen. So uh, that's gonna be my best guess. Now they do make a re rebuild kit, which gives you the, uh, the piston and the seals and the, uh, the O-rings that go around the piston itself. If, if it is not too corroded on the inside, if not, if it is, then you probably have to replace the whole thing. But odds are it is just going to be the one, the one piece of equipment that you haven't now dealt with so far from what I can tell from your question. And that's going to be the master cylinder. So open it up, take a peek and tell me what you find. I always give you all this advice. I like hearing back as to whether or not I was right or not. All right, let's see if we're starting to get a few questions. Oh yeah, let me scroll back up. Panagiotis, hello Panagiotis. I hope that package makes it to you. Uh, last time I was tracking it, it was in the Netherlands. So I guess it's getting close to you. So let us know if and when it shows up. And don't forget it's one digit off or a tenth digit off on the, um, on the address. Everything off road. Just order parts from Partzilla and don't come, they won't come in till March. Oh man, I want to ride. <sighs> Welcome to our world, man. Um, I, if we don't have it and we're having to hold you off till March, that means the manufacturers don't have it either. And that's why it's projected out so far. Believe me, we're not trying to hide anything from you or keep it to ourselves. If we had whatever parts that you were looking for, we'd be shipping them out. <laughs> it's, uh, it's everybody else is called in the same mix too. You know, you may find your other part somewhere. I mean, not that I want to send you somewhere else, but somebody may have one sitting on a shelf. So just do a, a quick search around. And uh, if they're unable to cough it up one up either, as soon as we get it in, I guarantee you they're going to pop it right out the, right out the door. All right. Brandon Lafiva. I have a 2009 KFX 450 R smokes whenever you rev it up. Wondering if it's oil smoke or fuel smoke. Hmm. Wondering if I have may I have some oil ring uh, worn and letting some oil get past. All right, a couple of things. Uh, what color is the smoke? Is it blue or is it more of a white color? I mean, it could even be uh, um, maybe a little bit of fluid getting in through your, your head gasket. So I would do a uh, compression test on it. And if that's not revealing anything, maybe do a leak down test. Another possibility is, um, believe it or not, potentially your valve seals up at the top of those valve stems. Um, if your compression is uh, like it should be and your leak down is not showing anything, it's going to be those seals more than likely. All right, Craig White. Hey, John, I changed my oil and changed out the oil filter on my YFC450, and now the oil filter cover is leaking oil. It has a brand new O-rings, but one screw seems to be stripped. What should I do? Okay, yeah. If I remember correctly, there's only three um, M6. Is it M6 or M4 um, threads that go in there? At any rate, if you stripped out one of those, it needs to be rethreaded. The trick is you can't go with a larger screw so or bolt. Um, so what I would suggest is using a, a system called Time Cert. I'm not a really big fan of helicals. Time certs give a really, really clean install, and you can actually uh, go past the actual threads. I know on some of the helicals, if you don't break off that tab just right, it'll catch the end of the threads of your bolt, and yeah, then you're screwing things up from here on out. Because this isn't going to be a one-time use, especially on a, an old cover um, bolt such as yours. And this is something you're going to have to access two, three times a year. So look into time cert, make sure you get the correct um, metric size as well as the pitch. But a uh, yeah, big believer in those things. So I, that should be able to straighten it out. Kevin Justice, oh boy, what is the best ATV on the market right now? Whichever one makes you the happiest, that's the best one. <laughs> they're, they're also, the in between the the big four, they're also evenly matched. Uh, it comes down to just personal preferences as far as, you know, maybe uh, certain features one may have over the other. Uh, 
I've had good luck with uh, with all four. <laughs> Pulled answer. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Hey, John, you're the man. Well, thank you. Um, 2012 Yamaha FZ8, oil leaking from the oil leaking from the water pump we pulled. Do you recommend replacing the entire water pump or just the seals? Is replacing the seals just as easy? You shouldn't have to replace the whole pump. Uh, they do make just seal kit, seal kit for that because what you're experiencing is the shafts coming out of the engine. You've got the water pump and the water here, but where that shaft goes through, well, guess what? You got oil on that side and evidently it's pumping it past and it's coming out the weep, weep hole. So you should just be able to replace the oil, oil seal on that side of the shaft. I can't remember if it's uh, a one piece seal for the water on one side and the oil on the other, but at any rate, you should be able to order that separately instead of replacing the, uh, the entire shaft. 2012, man, you must be putting some miles on it. Well, I guess that is 10 years old now. Man, time is flying, isn't it? Um, Panagiotis, can you send me, please, the tracking number? Sure can. Um, Hank, if you're on, if you would send that uh, uh, that same tracking number that I sent, good gosh, it was the end of November. Um, it's, I believe it starts with a CL, and let's drop that Panagiotis so he can uh, track it from his end. I hope it finally shows up. Uh, <clears throat> Brandon Lefebvre, he agrees with me. I was thinking that as well. It's probably going to be that master. Wesley is asking me, hey, John, I've got a Ninja 300. Lately, battery light comes on. Put a new battery in it because it was an old one anyway. When I turn the lights on, when I want to start, it makes a fast, fast clicking sound. All right. Well, it sounds like, um, well, the battery may be old, but it sounds like it's not charging to me. And we've done dozens of uh, videos showing how to test the charging system. So you can go pick one. I and mean, uh, we've done them on several machines, but the testing procedure is the same. Get a voltmeter, put it on your battery, whatever it reads, 12.4, 12.5 would be a sign of a semi-healthy battery. When you crank it up and let it idle, well, that should go up to plus 13, 13 and a half, maybe 14 volts as you rev it up to see if you're uh, charging or not. Odds are it's probably going to be in the regulator rectifier, and uh, we've extensively shown testing on that, and I think we even did a, a standalone on one of our How to Service uh, vid series. So take a peek at those two uh, or that one resource and I can walk you through it. All right. Pole dancer once again. My 2012 Yamaha FC8 has got 52,000 miles on it now. And you do put some miles down. Never had any issues except a small amount of leaking from that wee pole. Thanks so much for the advice. Not a problem. That's what I'm here to do. And everybody's uh, slow today. Well, I guess it's because they had a false start. Usually there's so many questions, I can't, I can't even keep up with them because they scroll through so fast. So we'll head back over to some of them that I could have missed last week. And then uh, maybe a few more will chime in. I'm going to make it easy for me today. I can get back to work on. I was working on the Jixer a little bit. Well, I guess I can talk about that for a second. I was ready to sell this thing and I took it out for a ride and she wouldn't rev past like 8,500 RPM. So you just go there and just bog like hell. And of course I was thinking fuel pump and I was like, no, I already replaced the fuel pump. And I was like, all right, uh, injectors. No, they don't seem to be firing. Then it hit me. It has two sets of injectors. You've got the primaries that are down low on the fuel, the fuel rail. And then you got the secondaries up top and they give you that additional at around nine grand, you know, 9,000 RPMs to uh, rev it all the way out. So for whatever reason, those, those top four, which they are working, are not getting activated. So I'm still running that down. But the other thing I'm working on, you can't really see it on the table, but I'm working on the shim kit for the race tech system for our CRF450R, which uh, we gave away to Ken. Last name or starts with an M. I can't say his last name. It's up to him if he wants to uh, let everybody know his full name. But at any rate, um, I'm uh, setting it up for him. And honestly, <laughs> I feel like I'm setting it up for myself. We are roughly the same age, same build, God help you, and uh, the same riding experience. So uh, <laughs> he's made it easy for me. 
And plus, you send all that information into Race Tech, and they send you back or give you access to these sheets with all your shim stacks. You get all the shims together, replace the factory ones, and you're going to be good to go. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting that one finished up and getting it shipped up to him. Uh, Paul Dancer came back with another question before uh, I switch over to the um, ones from last week. It's slow, so I'll ask another. Cool, I appreciate it. I'm currently working on a valve adjustment. When doing measurements, how much friction should I feel to know that I've got the right side, right size feeler gauge in there? That is such a tricky question. Um, what's the best way? To where you can easily get it to go under there just with two fingers. I mean, if you're having to hold it really hard and it wiggle it in, that's too tight. You just want it to re reach in there just a little bit of stiction, just a very little bit. I usually go one above. If you have to force one above and then the, the one below slides in easily, you're there because a little bit uh, too much, a little bit larger, and yeah, you would have to actually almost feels like you're and you are uh, compressing the top of the valve to get it in there. And it looks like um, the guys down in Florida sent Panagiotis the uh, the uh, with the tracking number. So good. And I hope that thing shows up. What else y'all trying to tell me here? Yep, already took care of that. So let's get back over to my document. All right, Calum had asked me, hey buddy, got a query. Okay, my Honda, man, another Honda Foreman. My Honda Foreman keeps backfiring when I relax off the throttle. Am I correct in thinking it's a fuel air mixture screw or is it valve meter that needs to be adjusting? Many thanks. Well, a couple of questions, although you know, you, I'm re responding to a question from last week. Do you have an aftermarket exhaust on it? Because if that's the case, a lot of times the uh, aftermarket exhaust, they actually let you hear more of what's going on that the stock exhaust would normally cover up. Second, if you're still running a stock one, did you make any changes to it? Uh, and did you go into the carburetor and get it cleaned out or rebuilt? I would think the air fuel mixture sounds a little bit lean at this point. So I would richen it up about a quarter of a turn. If that still doesn't do it, go up to a half a turn. Anything beyond that, um, then I'd want to look at the, uh, the valve needle itself and make sure that you still have the same uh, factory jet in there as it stands. And um, if it has been adjusted, bring it back to stock, providing you are at or close to sea level and not at like you know, 8,000 feet or something crazy like that. So I answered your question by um, telling you that you needed to do the air fuel first and then take a look at the needle. So that's basically, you already knew where to go, but uh, I can just confirm the direction that you're heading. Jim Thom, another Honda. <laughs> Y'all see a recurring theme here? I've got a 99 Foreman ES and had no issues until now. Turn key, turns over intermittent, weak spark, then starter sticks with key off and have to disconnect the battery. Wow. New solenoid and coil and I see you, nothing else changed. Well, I need help. Jim, you're giving me all the indications that you've got a major problem with uh, your wiring harness. I ran into this on the um, our, our uh, Yamaha Grizzly. It was doing all kind of weirdness. It would start up and then it would run fine and then it would shut off and then it would activate the starter. I mean, just all kind of bizarreness. And it turns out that it had a uh, little critter. It chewed into part of the wires and they would actually start to melt together. But as the vehicle flex back and forth, as th th things tend to do, it would make or break these connections. So I would start looking at the... Um, the wiring harness and start doing some point to point measurements because it sounds like you've been everywhere else except the where the, the wiring harness itself. Uh, Har Heel had asked me, can you change the main jet on a 400 EX without taking it off? I believe you can. I'm actually staring at a 400 EX over here, that large lump of absolute grossness over here. <laughs> And by the way, y'all haven't told us what you want to see me do to this thing yet. So 
chime in, tell me what you want. But to answer your question, you should be able to loosen up the clamps and just rotate it up over to the uh, the shifter side and be able to get to your float bowl bolts by, you know, from there. All right. Now let's get back over to our live questions. David is asking me, hey, hi, John, is there an advantage to putting a Dalton clutch kit on the Yamaha 660 Grizzly? David, I'm not familiar with a uh, Dalton clutch kit. I would have to do a little bit of research on that to uh, answer your question. So you got me. I don't know about this one. Dalen is asking me, no question, but thanks for your how-to videos. I re rebuilt a pair of 400EXs. They turned out great. So much fun. Yes, they are. I can't wait to dive into that one over there. Uh, Panagiotis uh, chime back in. I check it seems to be on the way. I hope everything is going to be okay. Me and you both, brother. Me and you both. That is a well-traveled box of parts. <laughs> they need to find their way to you because I put a bunch of stuff in there. Joe McQueen is asking me, hello, sir, 2007 Honda CBR 600RR. Pretty familiar with that one. I'm concerned about my swing arm bearings, i.e. dog bone bearings. How often should I stress out about them? You really shouldn't. Um, just to check them to make sure they're okay. Do a lift. I think you'll have to put something around the, um, um, the exhaust to lift it up by the frame or as close as you can get to the frame to where there's no weight on your uh, rear suspension and just rock it back and forth. See what it feels like um, to get an idea how to do that. Actually, I rebuilt everything on this uh, Jixer behind me and uh, you can look at its playlist and see what it took to go in and replace the uh, all of the actual steer, the uh, swing arm bearings, as well as the dog bones, all of that got redone. So if you would uh, take a peek at it, and uh, I can at least walk you through um, what to look for. Cool. I shall as soon as I get through streaming, period. <laughs> but uh, yeah, on that one, on the playlist, uh, I'll go, I'll lift it up and I'll start moving things around just where you get a, a kind of a feel for it. And that one is, was a real mess. I mean, good gosh. It, was, it even smelled bad when I went to take it apart. Uh, hopefully yours is in better shape than that one was. But should you stress about them? No, that's just something you need to go check you know, every so often. It's a very important part, especially on a performance bike like, uh, like yours and that one. I mean, all that stuff's going to be lined up just right. All right, guys, it's only 324, but um, I've caught up with you again. Up. Oh, But uh, Joe had a couple more. Uh, Joe, uh, what is involved for replacing the cam chain? If I remember correctly, it can be done with the engine in the frame, although I know you're going to have to pull the, uh, the, uh, the charging system off, not the stator, but the rotor off, well, your flywheel. But I think it can be done in the frame. Um, Leap of Faith. Hey, John, just wanted to say I love your video. So I just rebuilt a 2013 Grizzly 700 and check your videos uh, for insight. Uh, so um, your videos are helpful a lot. So thank you. Now, you're very welcome. And thank you for dropping in and spending some time with us. Panagio, just one last question. Uh, what do you have planned for the weekend? I hope nothing. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> I've, uh, I may mess around with a car project I have at home. I have a, an M5 I've been ignoring, so who knows. The parts show up in time. I'll probably crawl under it and either work on it or take a nap. Well, all right, guys, I'm going to sign off at this point. Everybody uh, remember to go to partzilla.com forward slash LP forward slash PRMX and go check out our giveaway of this week. It's going to be a risk racing lift. So you know, I think I actually put a, uh, a link all the way at the top. So click, go enter to win. There's no charge to do that. I mean, come on, why not? I want to announce your name next week. 
Once again, congratulations to Olga. Well, everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will do this again next Friday at 3. Y'all take care.